Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are going to talk about Tensor RT 8.2 from NVIDIA. Ta -da! And this video is a little bit special because it's a news video. I usually don't do news content and content that are really now, but this is something that released today. And as you can see of this video, it's a sponsored video. Not because I got a monetary value <laughs> put on me or anything like that. I just got information before the actual release. And I had an embargo until today at lunch when NVIDIA actually released their products and talked about a lot of different things. And one of the things that they went through and talked about was Tensor RT. And this is available for uh, PyTorch and for TensorFlow and because I have been <laughs> compiling and working with TensorFlow a lot in the past they wanted me to have this information and make a video uh, so you will know about it too and TensorRT is a layer that you can put on a TensorFlow model and then run in TensorFlow as you usually do on different hardware and get an accelerated um, performance. So, in this case, when they are talking about 8.2, they think that they have a 3x performance boost from previous models, which is huge. So that's why they want to go out and talk about this. And I would say that 3x uh, performance is dependent on which kind of model you create and how you actually run it and so on and I haven't done any performance testing and there is a lot of people out there that will do that kind of work but I wanted to see can I get this to run on my computer that was my main goal here so I started off building it in a lot of different configurations I realized after two weeks of compiling TensorFlow every day every week an hour that I couldn't really get it to work on Windows I was very close, but not really there, and probably because it was not really implemented yet on Windows, and I will have a totally separate video where I go through and talk about that. If you are excited for that, give it a thum thumbs up. If you don't want to see that video, give it this video a thumbs down, and if you have any other uh, more complex thought about it, leave a comment about that. But let's go over to so let's go over to my model here and this is what I got when I just ran my model and put it into the tensor board and that's not really something that is very much viewable. It's a pretty weak model because this doesn't really tell me anything about my model and I could probably find my model here somewhere within this but this is directly from my training data and yeah, <laughs> so so that's what I'm showing there. So what do I need to run Tensor RT? You want to have CUDA installed. You want to have CUDNN installed. You want to install Tensor RT, and then you want to install the latest TensorFlow version, which now is 2.7.0 which supports at least Tensor RT 8. 8.2, you might want to want, wait for the next version because I didn't get that to work. So in my case here, I ran the TensorFlow model by a um, TensorFlow that I actually built myself. And I added these two inclusion files here to get the, the Tensor RT 8.2 to actually work in there. And with my model here, I called my model new model. So that's something that I transferred over from my computer. And I have it here. And then I run this transform. A look at that little script here. It's a very simple script. You um, import this ten, uh, TRT convert as TRT. And then I will get the conversion params, which is the default ones. And I will replace and say what kind of floating point or int version do you use? What precision mo mode are you using? So a floating point 32 bits, 
16 bits, int 32 and 16 bits and so on. And then you have a max workspace and if you are not changing this you will get a pretty large one so it would probably work for my model but if you have a larger model your workspace in byte might want to be a little bit larger then i create uh, this converter here i have my uh, my model my saved model directory in here and then conversion params i put that into that and then i will get a, uh, a converter if I run convert, I will get a graph back and then I will save this as a new model. So this is a directory that I can run this model from and do inference faster on NVIDIA devices, which is really nice. But I wanted to look at the graph. So I uh, did a write graph here, wrote it out to the same directory and then called it graph uh, pbtxt. And I route it out as both text and non-text. It doesn't really matter. I think you can have one of them. But after that, I will have the graph in there. But running the tensor board against that graph will not show anything. So what I needed to do then is actually run a script uh, that is available in the TensorFlow directory and in the python tools and then import pb to transfer board and give my model there uh, which is the new model in this case and my log there which is log2 and i before i ran it on the trt model and to the directory log so i have two log directories here log log and log2 and if i run log2 and start my tensor board on that then we will see the model that is my model but just the graph of my model so here you see the model that is loaded and it's just a bunch of nodes but these nodes are intercorrect uh, connected but you need to go down and actually look into them so here we have the dense layer it's more explained and here we have my actual model so you see that i have a converge step a max pooling then another convert a max pooling again a third conver uh, conversion convolution and then max pooling flatten and then a dense layer a dropout layer and a, den a second dense layer so this is my model that i have here and then i have a bunch of other uh, things here but those are just describing specific functions that are called within my model so here we have the conv convolution 2 layer which has the stateful parameter and identity and so on so these are just describing the different nodes if i on the other hand go over here and restart it with the log directory and uh, i expected it to be a lot different because now i'm using the tensor um, RT model uh, instead of my uh, own model that I haven't run through this yet and it's also a bunch of nodes here but if we look closer into this we can find the inference prune for instance and in this one you have the TRT engine operation which is used within this prune uh, function so in some of these you have the trt engine in uh, included in it and other ones are looking very similar to my old model uh, and and so on so some of them are improved some of them are not we have models with a lot of static uh, values in it so here we have a lot of assigned values and i also found my model here after looking a bit uh, let's see if i can find it again um, so here we have my model again which uses a bunch of these different commands uh, i don't see the actual prune command and so on so i can see that the model is different i haven't ran it but i expect it to just work 
And this is pretty much what I have so far, uh, sadly, because I got this to compile today on Linux. And after ha I have done a lot to get it to work on Windows and failed a lot, running it on Linux was just one try. So if you want to run inference models and training models, I would... <laughs> Uh, say that you should have a computer with good hardware and some kind of Linux uh, or perhaps a Mac uh, Then you will have a much easier um, Setup process at least when you are using tensor RT today This what I what I went through today or was just because I was an early adopter of course this will be much easier when you install this on your own. This was what I wanted to cover today. I hope that you found it interesting. I hope that you learned something today. I hope that you are interested in this new technology and want to try out the inference engine for yourself. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave them down in the comment section down below. If you haven't subscribed yet, Please do that and I really hope to see you in the next video.